University. And um, it's a pleasure to be here with you today to moderate uh, today's economic session. So today's session is going to be focused on all things economics at Laurier. Um, and so before I go any further, I would like to acknowledge that Wilfrid Laurier University and its campuses are situated on the territory of the neutral, the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee peoples. And we are very um, grateful and proud to be able to execute our work on their ancestral land. So just a few um, housekeeping items before we go ahead and get started. Um, for uh, We want this to be an intentional session for you today. We really want to make sure that we are supporting you and answering your questions. We have some current students, some alumni, um, advising um, and other supports on the back end of this call today to be able to answer your questions. So please draw your attention to the Q&A function of the platform. Okay, so please open the Q&A function. That's where we're going to be able to, um, to answer your questions. Please avoid using the, the chat function as we will not be moderating moder the chat for questions. We will be exclusively looking Q&A to track all of your questions. Following the formal presentation, we will be then moving toward a kind of open panel and Q&A session um, where we'll be happy to have some great discussion about the program and life at Laurier following the presentation. The presentation uh, will, the, the whole session in total will last no more than 45 minutes. So we certainly hope that you enjoy. And without further ado, I'm gonna go off camera and I'm going to um, ask Justin to, to take it away and share screen and, uh, and get us rolling on economics information. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks, thanks Dana. <clears throat> um, can everyone hear me and see the slides maybe? I don't know how I'm going to tell. Yes. Okay. We can see. Great. Uh, so first, I want to apologize here. I, it's not 2021. It's March 2022. Um, don't know why I put 2021 there. Uh, nevertheless, uh, welcome to the Econ Open House. Uh, coming at you live from my office, actually here on campus in Lazaridis Hall. Um, and the reason I bring that up is that uh, you know, for the most part here on campus, we're you know, pretty much back to normal. Our all of our classes are in person, including our our big classes. Uh, so it feels great uh, to actually be able to do this from campus, where uh, where people are are back. Okay. So um, first of all, who am I? Uh, I'm I'm an associate professor here in the uh, economics department. Um, uh, I've been working here since 2011. Previously, I spent a few years at the University of Manitoba. I did grow up right here in Waterloo, so I'm a, I am a local. Um, if you need to contact me for any reason, um, you know, you have after the session, you have questions or whatever, uh, it's best to email me at uh, econdirector at wlu.ca. I do have my uh, phone here, my office phone, uh, which is beside me. I don't, I don't use the office phone too much. So your best bet is to uh, drop me an email if you have any questions at all. Um, if you come here and you take some econ classes, uh, you're most likely to encounter me as your instructor teaching an econometrics course. Uh, that's what I've been doing lately. Uh, but I've also taught um, courses in the economics of education, labor economics, our capstone research project course, um, and a couple of others at, at both the undergrad and the grad level. Um, when I'm not teaching, <clears throat> I'm doing uh, research on education economics um, and the economics of charitable giving, which is kind of a niche uh, niche area in um, in economics. Okay, but you didn't come here to learn about me so much. You probably came here to learn about the economics programs. So first of all, let me just give give you this bit of information here uh, before I talk specifically about the details of the programs. You know, while you're here at school at Laurier taking courses, if you decide to join us, um, what are the things you can expect to, you know, to encounter here besides um, your classes? Uh, so first of all, we have a great, really great co-op uh, program here. Uh, lots of students do the co-op uh, where you gain work experience by doing a few work terms um, in, in whatever uh, company you get hired in. You can apply your knowledge that you learned here in, the, in those jobs, and then you can take the knowledge you learned from the jobs and bring it right back here to your classes. So it's a, it's a nice feedback effect there where you learn on the job and you can bring that back to schooling and vice versa. Outside of that, um, 
if you want to get involved, uh, and I suggest that you do, uh, we have a ton of student clubs here at, in the Lazaridi School. Um, if you can think of an area of business or economics uh, where you'd want to be more involved and learn more, there's probably a club for that. Um, and in particular, later on, I'll be talking to you guys a bit about what the economics club does um, here on campus. Okay, and then, um, you know, case competitions are more of a business thing, but uh, economics is kind of involved in, in some ways. And in particular, uh, we have we usually field a team to go into the uh, Bank, of, Bank of Canada Governor's Challenge. So the Bank of Canada is our central bank. Every year they hold a challenge to, um, on a sort of a monetary policy issue where students, you know, model the economy using what they've learned in their courses. Uh, and all the universities in Canada compete against each other. Um, Laurier has been a finalist in this in this competition every year except this one, and that's because we didn't actually have a team this year, uh, and we've won it twice. Okay, so Laurier is very very successful um, in in this in this challenge. So, aside from your classes, these are sort of some of the things that you might encounter here um, here at Laurier. Now, in terms of our programs, um, we really have sort of three three programs that you could choose from. Um, and as I'll talk about in detail here, you can actually customize each one of these three in a whole bunch of different ways to make this really, um, you know, your degree. So that our, our, I guess, flagship program is the Honours BA in Economics. And, um, you know, the, the core of the, of the program is you take uh, a set of courses in microeconomics, macroeconomics, econometrics, which, which is econ economic statistics uh, throughout the, uh, the four years, and then a whole bunch of electives in economics. So you maybe you're interested in the environment. We have a course uh, for that. Maybe you're interested in really interested in sports, which a lot of our students are. We have a course for that too. Um, most, more recently, we've just added a course on the economics of China. Um, and there's a whole, bu whole bunch of different fields you can study in. And then you also take some courses outside of outside of economics. So, you know, if you're like myself, um, I did uh, my bachelor's degree was a joint major in French and economics. Uh, if you like a break from doing doing econ, uh, you can go read some some nice 18th century French literature. Uh, and um, if you want to, um, after the first year, you can apply for uh, a co-op uh, co-op program. Uh, and um, it's a it's a pretty large program. It's a, it's the largest uh, business co-op program in Canada. Um, there's a ton of positions in both the public and private sector. So, say you wanted to work for government, uh, doing policy or something like that. Lots of positions there. Maybe you want to work for uh, you know a, a, a financial firm or something like that. A bank. Lots of options there as well. Okay, so tons of tons of different ways you can do you do co-op. I'll talk more about that. But you apply. Uh, at the beginning of year two. Now I said you can customize things a bit. Uh, and so there's a bunch of different ways you can do that. So one is the, the so-called management option. Uh, and this is available to econ programs and any other program on campus. Uh, when you were applying uh, to us through UAC, you might've noticed that the management option is a direct entry program. So you, you, you could have applied to that right out of uh, high school. And this basically just gives you a sort of a broad overview of, um, of business. So you take a bunch of different business courses in all the different business areas. Okay, I believe that's four credits. Okay, uh, it's, it's almost kind of like a minor. They're a little bit different, but it's, it's almost the same thing. Um, maybe you don't want to do, you don't want to combine economics with business. Maybe you want to combine it with stats. Okay, uh, you can you can do a combined major with um, economics and in any other uh, bachelor's degree. So it doesn't have to be, you know, things that are traditionally associated with economics. You could do English. You could do whatever you want. Okay, so you'd fulfill the requirements of the econ major and also of the other major. You can do minors. So you could minor in again whatever. Most majors in in on campus will have a minor option available and here you'll take somewhere around three credits about six half courses to get that minor. So it's a kind of a, a small exposure to another field. <clears throat> um, within economics uh, once you get to fourth year you have the option of doing a research specialization which is you take a few extra courses that focuses on teaching you how to do research and economics. 
Um, and there's a bunch of other options as well. So, I mean, just the list here I have beside me, I talked about the management option. There's a uh, legal studies option. There's uh, Muslim studies. There's social entrepreneurship, ethics. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of different options available French for you. Okay. So whatever, whatever you have in mind in terms of what you want to do with your economics degree, uh, however you want to customize it, it's probably an option. Okay. Now I talked about um, combining economics with another major, and uh, we actually have two programs that you can you can uh, apply to uh, that you can transfer into. Sorry, uh, that kind of um, we, we we're highlighting in our program, and that's combining economics with accounting and financial management. Okay, so let's. Uh, I'll just step back for a second and mention that you may not have seen economics and accounting or economics and financial management as an option um, when you apply to us through UAC. If you want, if you apply just to the honors BA in economics and you want to do economics and accounting or economics and financial management, we can transfer you into these programs before you start. Okay, so you can reach out to us. Um, so the honors BA in economics and accounting uh, is the standard honors BA in economics that I just talked about, plus you do all the same accounting courses that the business students do, and um, you can uh, work your way towards the uh, CPA accreditation, okay? So the only difference between the accounting program that you would do in a BBA uh, and the one in econ is that the, the non-accounting courses that you take are going to be more economics focused. You know, we, I think our it's fair to say our courses are a little bit more uh, technical. We put a little more emphasis on, say, the statistics than, um, than the BBA program does, okay? Another major difference is that the BBA program is very structured. You take a certain set of courses in certain years. The economics program is a, is a lot more flexible. You don't necessarily have to follow that same standard uh, progression, okay? So if you're into more flexibility in, in your program and you still want to do accounting, econ and accounting might be an option for you. Uh, and just like the other, just like the honors BA in economics, you can do co-op with this program as well. Okay. And you can get placements in, uh, you know, accounting firms, which would be the ideal if you want to be an accountant. Okay. Economics and financial management combines the econ BA with, a, with the finance program from the BBA. Uh, and this may be, if you're thinking about this, might be a more natural fit, right? Finance and economics kind of complement each other a lot. Uh, there's a ton of economists working in the financial industry, in particular banks and insurance. Um, and what you would get, again, a, that you possibly uh, is, is less emphasized in the business program is, is, these, uh, is this addition, additional technical training in things like statistics. Okay, But again, you take the same sort of finance courses. Um, and you can work your way towards the uh, you know, CFA designation, Certified Financial Analyst, if, if I got that right. Okay, and also, again, um, you can um, combine this with co-op. So um, let's suppose that uh, you join us here at Laurier um, in an economics program, and I hope you do. Uh, what's your first year going to look like? So the standard, uh, the, the typical pro, uh, schedule for first year is you take uh, in the fall term intro to microeconomics, um, our calculus the calculus course for business and economics, um, the intro business course, BU 111, um, and then a couple of electives from wherever on campus. Okay, and then in the winter term, you take introduction to macroeconomics, um, the, uh, the two um, other first year business courses, and uh, again, additional two electives. Now, I said that this was the a typical um, program uh, schedule that you might you might follow. This is by no means what you have to do in any way. Uh, if you're not interested in doing any of the business courses, you absolutely don't have to. Um, this is just, you know, what a lot of our students end up uh, end up doing. Okay. Now, what can you expect inside those classes? Well, EC120 and EC140 are very big classes. Um, they're, they, we literally just returned to these lectures a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and there's about eight, the section is about 800 students in our in our big lecture hall, which is just to the left of me here. Um, so a lot of students um, that the uh, 
the tests tend to be multiple choice just by the nature of the classes being so huge. Okay. Um, the BU111 and the BU121 courses are again, large lectures, but then they break you out into uh, smaller labs and you do things like presentations, group work reports that you don't generally do in the econ course, in the intro econ courses. Okay, BU127, you'll have uh, intro to financial accounting, you'll have uh, some labs there that you can do if you want. And then math 129, uh, the calculus course, again, it's in a big lecture, but you do a series of labs in, in uh, in smaller classes. Um, in the economics part of the program, as you progress from second year to third year to four year, fourth year, the classes get smaller and smaller and smaller until you get to the capstone course, which I'm teaching this term, EC481, uh, and there's 25 students in that class. It's a seminar course where you write a research paper um, and present it a bunch of times to the, to the students, okay? Uh, the electives also tend to be much smaller as well. And there you'll, you'll get into um, things like presentations, group work, possibly, um, and writing research reports. Uh, a lot of students are interested in co-op. Um, so here's just a broad overview. If you want, to, if you want more details about co-op, please contact the co-op office. Um, it's competitive entry. Unlike a lot of Unlike other places, we actually start the co-op at the beginning of year two. You apply after your first year here at Laurier. Um, to get in, you'll need like a high B sort of average coming out of first year, okay, in your, in your fall and winter courses combined. Um, they are gonna take a look at your resume. So try to get some experience, uh, maybe go you know, join one of the clubs that I talked about before, maybe do some volunteering. Uh, if, if you're working in, in the industry in any way, if you have a part-time job or something like that, this all counts, okay? Um, now, I understand that people don't necessarily all want to work while you're in school. Um, clubs are, are, a, are a good alternative to that, okay? And anybody who meets the, the cutoff gets interviewed, and your admission to co-op is based on all those things. Um, in year two, you'll take a, a course specifically designed for co-op students to teach you some skills about writing a resume, writing a cover letter, how to do interviews. So when you actually do those interviews later, you're well prepared. Okay, and you'll also learn how to search for search for jobs. Um, in terms of our students that get uh, that get into the program, about seventy percent or so end up in Toronto somewhere in the GTA. 20% around here in the Waterloo region, and then 10% in various other places, including the United States. Um, here's what your, your schedule would look like um, across the four years of the program if you get into the economics co-op. So you study in year one for fall and winter, take the break through spring, uh, do a study term in fall and winter in year two, and then in the spring of your second year, you take your first work term, and then it's alternating study and work terms until the end where you take two study terms and you're done. Okay, so this is the, this is the co-op sequence. Um, so that's, the, that's sort of like the academic component to the degree. Uh, maybe maybe this, is, this is like part of the reason why you wanna to come to Laurier for the academics. Maybe you wanna also come for the uh, things that happen outside of the classroom. In terms of economics, I mean, there's lots going on on campus, but in terms of specifically economics, um, we have the Laurier Economics Club, and uh, this is the sort of only economics-focused club on campus. Um, and they, these guys host a wide range of events. So uh, things that might be useful for you in terms of academics is these uh, tutoring sessions that they provide. They do mock midterms to prepare you for the, uh, the midterms that happen in those courses. Um, in, in chats I've had with them, they were also considering doing some of this kind of stuff for the second year courses. Um, they hold sessions every year um, where they bring back students uh, that graduated from Laurier and they talk about their careers. So what types of careers can you expect to have in economics? And I think um, these, this set of careers is probably maybe broader than you might be thinking. Uh, they hold grad school information sessions where they tell you about all the ins and outs of applying to grad school. And again, sometimes they bring back uh, previous students. Um, They've been talking about starting case competitions, uh, possibly maybe doing um, some sort of uh, uh, 
yeah, not not the same sort of structure as a business case competition, but maybe doing some modeling, something like the bank, the uh, governor's challenge that I talked about before. Uh, they were talking about doing a work workshop on research skills to help you write those research papers. They held a professor debate back in November. Um, and then they've been doing other social events like trivia night. So there's lots of stuff that they're putting together. Great group of people. <clears throat> if you come to our economics program, I highly encourage you to get involved with the club. If you want to know more, they're, they're on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Um, <clears throat> so then suppose you, uh, you come to us, you, you graduate, and then you, then you find yourself looking for a job. What can you expect? Now, the data on this is a little bit older. Uh, in terms of specifically economics graduates, but um, <clears throat> back in 2010, the average uh, for a bachelor's degree in economics is about 93,000 a year. Again, this, this is everybody at different points in their career uh, who has a bachelor's degree in economics, about 93,000 a year for men, women less than that. Um, if you come to us and take economics, you'll learn all about why this gender gap exists. You can take an entire course on that actually. Um, if you go and get a master's degree, uh, then you can expect a higher, you know, higher average salary. And again, that gender gap is still there. Um, you know, we, we're in, we're in a business school. We tend to send, um, our students to, you know, banks, the big five I've got, I have listed here, insurance companies. We have, you know, Waterloo is a major hub for insurance. Um, if you do economics and accounting, you might, and you pursue, you know, want to be an accountant, you do the CPA um, requirements, maybe you'll end up at something like a Deloitte, P, uh, uh, KPMG, Price Waterhouse. Um, but you don't have to work in industry, right? So this, the economics program isn't specifically uh, producing um, financial type people. You could work in the public sector and lots of our students do. So the Bank of Canada, for example, has a great set of jobs. They hire a ton of people, really interesting work. Statistics Canada, if, if stats is more your thing, Finance Canada. Um, you could also work for consulting firms. Um, you know, and the, the, the set of careers in economics is, is really limitless, right? If you end up being something like, a, um, you know, a, a sports uh, enthusiast and you learn a bunch of statistics, you could help, you could help um, do analytics for a sports team. There are tons of economists doing that. Okay, so lots of different options. Um, in case you're wondering, you know, who, who some notable people are that have graduated here. So starting from the bottom, uh, David Chilton, you might recognize um, as a, from Dragon's Den. He's, he's written some books. I believe he's also from Waterloo. Uh, Craig Wright um, is a senior VP and chief economist at RBC. Carolyn Wilkins was the former deputy governor of the Bank of Canada. And then uh, Brandon Snow, the most recent, I guess, notable grad I have on the list, was the chief investment officer at Cambridge Global Asset Management. Uh, he is now uh, retired. <clears throat> um, maybe you don't want to get a job right out of your degree. Maybe you want to get uh, further education. You want to go on to grad school. Um, we send about 15% of our graduates to grad school in economics. Lots of them go to great schools here in Canada, the US, the UK. Okay. Um, you could instead pursue a professional uh, program. Uh, so maybe you wanna do a law degree. Lots, econo economics training is great for doing law school. Lots of, you learn lots about formal logic. Um, you know, people sometimes work a couple of years and come back and do an MBA. Uh, you could do some, you could do the CFA we talked about before, uh, or you could do a, like a master's in public policy or international policy or something like that. Hey, lots of economists working in the development space. Um, you could get, uh, if you do economics and accounting, you could, uh, you may want to do the CPA designation. Um, and you could, if you want to do that, you, you know, talk to advising, they'll uh, tell you how to proceed to the graduate diploma in, uh, in accounting. Uh, and then the CFA, which I talked about before. Okay. And that brings me to the end. Um, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure if we're moving directly to, quest, to questions, but, uh, if you have any, at any point, I'll be able to hopefully be able to help you out. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so, so much for, uh, 
for that robust presentation and, and uh, getting a lens into all things Laurier economics. Um, and so at this time, folks, uh, I would love to redirect your focus uh, to the Q&A function of the platform. Uh, this is your opportunity to uh, to ask your questions. You've got the experts in the room in the space right here, right now. Uh, take advantage of it. Let's make this intentional for you and uh, make this a good use of your time. Hop into the, the Q&A function and, and get your questions in there and we'll be happy to answer them. But uh, without further ado, I would like to ask our panelists to, to join us. We've got a mixture of alumni and current students that are studying in the economics program at Laurier or have studied in the program and are now off to, uh, to cool things that they're going to share with us. So um, I think it's a great way to start off by having each of the four panelists, if you would briefly just introduce yourself. Give us a, a little bit of a background of where you're at in your degree or, or uh, what your degree background is. Um, and then also uh, just share with folks, um, you know, there's some big decisions coming their way uh, with uh, where to spend the next four years of their life and, and what program and university to select. So if you could share with them, uh, you know, what, when, when it all came down to it, why you chose Laurier Economics um, when you were in their shoes, uh, maybe to share that with them as well. So I'll pass it over to you to uh, to introduce yourselves and uh, do that little bit as well. I, I go first, actually, if you also want to go first. <laughs> Perfect, sounds good. Well, hey, hey everyone, thanks for, so much for being on this call. My name is Robert Wilson. I was a, I just finished my uh, undergrad of honors economics with the management option last spring, and now I'm doing my master's of business economics here at Laurie as well. Super happy to answer any questions you guys may have. Um, and I kind of picked uh, economics, especially at Laurie, because of the experimental learning that you really get in this program. Throughout a lot of your like statistics classes, you actually work with real Canadian data, and like you really do kind of like seek out trends. That are happening in the real life and you kind of do get that ability to um, think like really critical about like real life trends so that's something that I really did find interesting for this program. I can go next. Um, hi everyone my name is Sash. I'm in my third year in the economics and accounting program um, so if we have any questions specifically about it I would love to answer uh, give the students perspective about it. Um, why I chose um, the Laurie Economics program is um, I took some economics classes in my high school and I just really loved, um, you know, learning about the economy, like how it functions and learning about demand and supply. It was really interesting to me. Um, and I thought of digging into it deeper, um, just like Rob, maybe I might do a master's, who knows? <laughs> he loved his economics. So he went on, <laughs> went on further. So um, I just fell in love with the subject. That's what I, uh, I chose. And specifically Laurie, why I chose was just like, I understood the amount of um, like the variety in the program, um, taking multiple classes, not just required classes, you can take uh, some fun electives um, like sports economics and I took environmental economics. Um, now I'm taking economics of China and all of this like variety that I can add to my degree is really interesting. So I'm not just learning, uh, you know, like one specific thing, I just get to do um, learn a lot about economics. So that's why I love it. Um, I will pass it off to Cam. Cam. Hi everyone, uh, so I'm Cam. I'm in my fourth year of the economics program and I also have the management option on the side. Um, the reason why I chose Laurier originally, I came in as a global studies student with the management option. Um, so I originally chose Laurier just because of the atmosphere on campus. It's a very welcoming and inviting space, which I really enjoyed. Um, but then ultimately, because I was taking economics courses through the management option, I realized that was something that I was a little bit more interested in and also more, more suited for. Um, I, my favorite part about the program is honestly the statistics as, aspect of it. Um, so you get to take a lot of different econometrics courses and more analytical. Um, I'm not a huge theory person myself, which is interesting that I'm in econ, but I do really love the stats part of it. So yeah, I've gone to take a lot of different courses as well. Right now I'm in an econ of strategy and management, which is very cool. It's applying, um, you know, econ more to the business side and strategy, which I really enjoy. I'm in fourth year micro as well. So yeah, any questions about those upper year courses, I can uh, answer those too. I guess uh, I'll, I'll go introduce myself. My name is Asad. Um, I am an alum of this program. Um, I graduated in 2019. 
Um, I, one of the biggest reasons why I honestly chose Laurier, it's, it's, it feels crazy. I feel old now, but um, just remembering back to when I selected, one of the biggest things for, for me was the community. So I, I, I'm currently located in Halifax. I'm, I work at uh, TD. I'm a commercial banker. Um, at the time, though, I was in Ontario. And the biggest thing, again, was community. Um, the two words I, I just picked up on, uh, on, on Cam, actually, she said, Welcome and, welcoming and inviting. I, I couldn't agree more. I came in just on a random day to, to see the campus. And I was looking around at the university and I was asking people where some of the residences were to check them out. And there's this one guy who was just walking around. He actually took me to his residence and my entire family was with me. And he showed us the entire residence. He gave us a tour of the floors. Um, he showed us everything. He showed us some of the business buildings at the time. And I was absolutely blown away by that because he was just a random student during exam time that I just ran into. And he was moving out that day and he just went above and beyond to help us out, walk us all over, even though he had no business doing that or and he didn't even know any of us. So I thought that was extremely cool. That was one of the things that I remember. It's been it's been eight years now, but I remember like it was yesterday. Um, so that was one of the best things that really definitely motivated me, the people around the town is it's it was all students so being around people my age always felt great I always felt safe there was never a moment in time that that changed at all um, after graduating I, so I was in the economics and accounting program um, so after graduating I pursued the CPA designation which I um, I passed last year um, and again Laurier was a massive massive part of why I did well in that because the, the courses that I took at the school, the skills that I learned, whether it be group work, whether it be classes, whether it be actual prep courses for the CPA, all helped a lot. Um, they all go towards your economics, uh, your accounting program, sorry, your CPA. So after you graduate, if you take all the classes required, you go straight to, to, to the program itself. Um, and it, it honestly did help a lot. And, and even today, uh, the amount of group work that was done, the amount of working with real world data, um, working with genuine true situations that are happening as we speak, especially with this world right now, um, was a big, big reason that I really genuinely enjoyed my experience. And I, some, a lot of those skills, a lot of the interpersonal skills, a lot of those I honestly still use today and I'm and, and very happy about. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much to each of you for um, for your uh, for your story and for sharing that uh, that insight. That's fantastic. Um, so there are a few questions in the chat that are in the Q and A that I think I'll just bring up, and then you know we're we're coming into a pretty close to time. We've got about ten minutes left together, and so I'm gonna an I'm gonna ask a few questions from from the Q and A, and then uh, I'll I'll finish off with a with a panel question that that each of you can uh, can leave our audience uh, with. Um, but uh, Justin, this this question might be um, best suited to you. Um, could you just remind folks um, just how many students generally come into the economics program each year? Yeah, so uh, total across all four years right now, we have about 1000 students. Um, and last year, our intro class was about 350. Uh, and that's, that was a little higher than normal. Uh, so yeah, anywhere between 250 and 300 is, is generally how many in, are in each particular year. Perfect. Thank you for that. And then uh, I'll just take a quick question here that uh, relates to admissions specifically. Um, so folks, if you have received a conditional offer of admission to a program, um, there's this question in here, um, when, you know, could you get an offer, then that's actually that's that's final and no longer conditional. Um, so every essentially every offer that we send out is conditional until we get your final official grades. So once we get your final official grades from your from your high school from you know whatever institution you're joining us from once we get those those final official grades whether they're transcripts or they're your final grade 12 grades from an ontario high school that's when we're able to assess you to see have you cleared your conditions it's very important that when you get your offer of admission that you pay very close attention to the big bold 
um, heading that says conditions, read that very, very carefully. Those are the things that you must do, those averages that you must obtain in your prerequisite courses and your overall average in order to keep your offer of admission. Once we go through the, the, the summer months, and we get those we get those grades those final grades that's when we're able to then clear those conditions off your off your uh off your offer and uh and give you then your your final um condition free offer of admission so you won't uh once we get those grades is when you'll get the 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 official um you know clearance uh with the conditions removed from your from your offer of admission is there a limit on transfer credits? I can answer that really quickly as well. Um, generally, uh, yes. So half of your degree has to come from Laurier. Um, so generally, depending on where you're coming from and, and um, you know, if it's a university to university transfer, um, and typically, unless it's a, an articulation agreement, would be the only time that you would actually see like 10 full credits come over but that would be the maximum in which we'd be able to to award but transfer credit assessment is done at the time of applying so once you've applied to the university is when we would do a transfer credit assessment um, and those are on a case-by-case -case basis and looked at with an individual set of eyes um, by one of our admission coordinators um okay so in these final moments in a minute or less in a minute or less because we're we're coming up on time here um, one of my favorite things to do at the end of these sessions is to uh, to ask each of the panelists, because you come from background and experience, um, could you share one piece of advice, one piece of advice, knowing the position that students are in right now, uh, making decisions on where they want to go to university in the next in the coming weeks and months. If you had one small piece of advice that you'd like to share with uh, with students and their families and supporters, uh, what would that be? in a minute or less. I can go first. Uh, this is something I always tell uh, prospective students coming on my tours and uh, in other recruitment webinars. Um, sometimes we think by now we have to have something fixed. You have to know what you're going to do in your career. You have to know that you're going to be an accountant or an economist um, or a marketing professional. So I think right now uh, the most important thing is that you're going to do a program that you love. And uh, it might be what you end up loving or it might not be. Some, it might not be. You might be doing something else. Um, so just come to the program, pick a program that you love. Don't think you have to have it figured out by now if you don't. Uh, if, you, if you're coming to a general program, that's fine as well. Um, so I think that's my piece of advice. Don't think you have to have everything figured out if you don't. Um, you will figure it out um, throughout the process. Uh, so I can go next. Uh, sorry, Saad, do you want to go? Oh, no, that's okay. You go ahead. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry. Um, yeah, so my, I was just going off what Sash said, like, it's okay to not know um, what is right, what do you think is perfect. Let's, like, I can mention that she mentioned she switched programs in her first year. I switched programs from communication, communications to economics in my first year as well. It's okay to not know exactly what, what you think is right, because um, like, you have the opportunity to take different classes and to see what you, and try out different things. So that's totally okay. And the last piece of advice also I would give to add to that is listen to your gut. It, it can be a lot, it can be overwhelming. You have a lot of information in these, these weeks probably being thrown at you. Take all that information in, listen to it, try to think about um, what is best for you. And at the end of the day, you can make the decision that you think is best for you. And that's all you can ask for. And I know it's stressful, but you guys are doing do great no matter where you guys go. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add a little bit to that. Not a whole lot, honestly. Um, one of the biggest things I learned during my time at Laurier was the value of people and the value of communication with this community that you have. Laurier is a massive network of not just current people, but alumni as well. I'm in, the, I'm in Halifax uh, at the moment in time, and I still know many Laurier alum here, actually, that I, I, I'm in constant communication with. So know that. Talk to people. If you're unsure about something, there are always, always, always people around to reach out to, whether it's now in your program. There are ac academic advisors always there to help you. Um, when you're looking to graduate, same, same thing then. After you graduate, same thing then. The people that the networks that you're going to make throughout your time here are invaluable and you're going to talk to these people and you're going to have them around for a very, very long time. So never lose sight of the value of people around you in the community. Awesome. And I guess I'll uh, finish up. So yeah, I was in your shoes only four years ago, so I definitely get it. I remember I was waiting to go on my campus tour and I was actually crying with my parents. I was so overwhelmed. 
And then as soon as I came on campus, I just saw all the friendly smiling faces and I just felt at home. Honestly, it was a huge comfort for me. Um, so I think my advice is for you to find not only a program, but also a school that will provide that same comfort for you. Um, you will ultimately want to go somewhere where you're going to be successful and where you're going to be the best that you can. So uh, keep that in mind while you're while you're making your decisions and just, uh, yeah, follow your gut and go where you uh, see yourself doing the best that you can. So, yeah. Awesome. Justin, any pieces of advice for students? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I would just echo everything that <clears throat> our, our, four, our four students here have said to us. Um, uh, you know, it's tons of people switch programs, right? It's way more common than you might imagine. Even if you're absolutely sure that you want to do a particular program, when you get here, you might change your mind, right? And that's, that's totally okay. That's totally normal. Uh, and then when you do get here, I guess my only other advice would be to make sure you, do, you make the most out of uh, your courses. And in particular, uh, don't be afraid to come to professor's office hours. Um, this is like a great opportunity to get one-on-one -on -one direct contact with your instructors. Office hours are often very underused. So you can, you can really kind of, you know, get some like direct one-on-one -on -one, uh, extra learning with, uh, with your instructors. Well, that's fabulous. Fabulous. And we're, we're coming into to landing the plane almost perfectly on timing. So thanks to all of you so much for sharing your insights and your experience in our economics program, all of the robust information, Justin, thank you. Um, students and families, um, supporters, we certainly hope that we were able to answer your questions today. Um, but the conversation definitely doesn't have to stop here. Uh, let's keep talking. Um, stick around for, for more of the open house day. Attend some other sessions throughout the afternoon here. And you can access us through the Discord channel. Our U Community Discord is live and embedded in the virtual open house platform. So please do uh, get into the conversation and and uh, chat with us via Discord. You can always connect with us at chooselaureatewlu.ca. Visit us on campus. Campus tours are in person and rolling. You can register for campus tours online as well. So uh, we certainly do wish you all the very best, big things to come. And uh, we are looking forward to continuing the conversation with you. So take good care. Thanks again to all of our panelists, to, to uh, Lori and Mel on the other end as well. Thanks for being here too. So thanks again. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Take good care. Wishing you all the very best.